Do you believe in God or do you have faith in him? The two things are actually very different. As Christians, we are called to have faith in God, to trust him with our lives, to trust him with the future, to trust his promises and to follow wherever he leads. And that's very different from just believing in God. Anyone can believe without allowing that to shape their lives. But God wants faithful followers, not just believers. So what does faithfulness look like? And what difference does it make in our lives? Well, the story of the call of Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 9, gives us some clues. Firstly, faithfulness means going on a journey. Abraham, who went on to become Abraham, was an elderly man when God first spoke to him. He was probably enjoying his retirement, chilling out with his family and friends, sitting by the fire, reminiscing about the good old days. And he had no idea that the best was still to come. And I love this about the story uh, because it reminds us that God can call all of us at any time and in any place. If you think you are beyond being useful for God, either because of your age or your location or because you think you don't have the right skills or gifts or because you failed him too often in the past, if that's what you think, then you're wrong. You are never too old. You are never in the wrong place. You are never ungifted enough. You've never failed too much and too often. God is looking for people who are passionate for him and want to serve him. And what you may lack in human ability, God will more than make up for through the power and intervention of the Holy Spirit. So here's Abraham taking it easy towards the end of his life and God shows up. And what's the first thing that God says to him? He says, leave. That is so not what Abraham expected to hear. In verse 1, God says to him, leave your country and your kindred and your father's house and go to the land that I will show you. And here's the first thing about being faithful to God. When we are faithful to God, when we stop just believing and really put our faith in him, he will take us on a journey. When we give our lives over to God, the adventure begins. Now that might mean a journey to physically leave where you are and go and do something different for God. But it also might mean, and always does mean, leaving where you are at in your mind. In Romans chapter 12, verse 2, Paul says this, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds. And the Greek word that Paul uses here for the world is not really about us conforming to the patterns of the world in which we live. It's more to do with the idea that wherever we are at right now, don't stay there. Move on and grow with God. Don't get too comfortable in the faith. Don't get too comfortable with the lifestyle that you're currently living. Don't get too comfortable with the way you are thinking. Because God has more for you. Wherever you're at in your mind right now, whatever your life is like, leave. Move on with God. Journey on with him and grow as a disciple of Jesus. When we give our lives over to God, one thing is absolutely clear. We are not called to stand still. Wherever you are in your life right now, God says, leave. Not because where you're at currently is a wrong place to be, but because the nature of the Christian life is a journey, constantly moving on into the vision of God. It's time to journey on. It's always time to journey on with God. It's never a time to stand still. Secondly, faithfulness leaves us feeling vulnerable. Of course, when we journey to a new place with God, it's always going to leave us feeling vulnerable. How must it have felt for Abraham to leave behind everything he knew at such a great age? Vulnerability doesn't even begin to express the half of it. Everything inside of it must have been screaming, stay. But God said, leave. And so he had to go, stepping out into the unknown. But this is at the very heart of faith, which makes it so different from belief. Do you trust God enough to step out and follow him, even if you don't know where he's taking you? If you didn't feel vulnerable in doing that, there'd be something wrong, wouldn't there? But still being able to trust God and go with him, even when you feel vulnerable, is perhaps the very definition of faith and faithfulness. 
But this is the important thing. We may feel vulnerable when we step out with God, but the journey into vulnerability is always made on a promise. The promise is that God will be with us and he will lead us forward. When God met with Abram, he said this, Leave your country, your people and your father's household and go to the land that I will show you. Wherever God is taking us beyond today, it's not up a blind alley. There is a destination for us. Now, I want to be really clear about this because this, I think, is a real misunderstanding that many Christians have. Sometimes Christians believe that there's some sort of roadmap for us to follow, but quite literally, God has every step, to, every step of our life mapped out for us. And our task is somehow to work out what that map is and follow the route that is marked out for us. But I don't think that's true at all, actually. The Bible never, ever suggests that our life choices are predestined. The complete opposite, in fact. And in this story from Genesis 12, we have a perfect example of that. God says, go to the land that I will show you. There is no road map given to Abram. I find it helpful to think of it like this for myself. Rather than God giving me a road map, to get through life. I think he gives me a compass. And as long as I'm generally heading due north, I'm going in the right direction. Now, there are times when I might veer off to the east or to the west a little bit. There are times when I might have to uh, retread my steps to the south. Uh, I could even come off the road for a bit and enjoy the views. But with compass in hand, as long as I'm heading due north, I know that I'm heading to the land that God has promised to me. There is a destination. I don't have a road map. I don't even need a road map. I just need to head due north and eventually I'll get there. Thirdly and finally, there is an appropriate attitude to adopt on the journey. Clearly, to step out on the journey in which we feel vulnerable, we need to have an attitude of obedience. In verse 1, God says leave your country. And in verse 4 it says, Sir Abram left. But Abram gives us a crucial example in his obedience because his journey with God was hallmarked by an attitude of worship. Twice in the short passage, verses 1 to 9, Abram stops to worship God. In verse 7, at Moreh, Abram stops to build an altar to the Lord. In verse 8, at Bethel, he builds another altar to the Lord and prays. So in all his anxieties and fear and sense of vulnerability, Abram prioritizes times of worship as his stability and his focus. And so we must prioritize worship as we journey into God's future together. When we worship God, we stay focused on him and that increases our faith and our trust and it helps us to remain faithful to God's call. And finally in verse 9, uh, which is of paramount importance, it says, Then God set out and continued towards the Negev. Now, it seems a bit odd to finish the story uh, in the middle of the journey, as it were, before he's even got to the end. But it's okay because it reminds us that stepping out in faith onto a journey is not the end of the story. It's just the next stage of our journey into God's future. It's not the destination. We are always moving on. We are always journeying on, never arriving, just hitting the next stage of where God wants us to be. So like Abraham then, we can commit ourselves to this journey of faithfulness wherever it may take us, feeling vulnerable, yes, but in the absolute confidence that our God is the God of the journey. We don't need a road map. We don't need step-by-step instructions of where God's going to take us through life. But we do need a vision of God. And with that vision sealed in our hearts, we can always remain faithful to his call. So for me, faithfulness, faith, is different from belief. We can all believe in God, but faithfulness is about stepping out on the journey, feeling vulnerable, yes, but in an attitude of obedience and worship following wherever God is taking us.